All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, very exciting week with the Gary family. Uh, we saw so many things, took thousands of images, but uh, mainly we saw a good amount of leopard. I think we saw 11 leopard in total, so a very exciting week. Anyway, here's a reel of the highlights, and then we'll get straight on to the edits. Enjoy. sightings that we saw, not all of them, but a lot of them, and uh, let's see what we got out of all those sightings. Now, I haven't necessarily chosen the best images, I've chosen images that we can all learn from. Um, that's the point, not the point of this channel, is to just try and show you what our best images are. That will be part of some videos, but I'm definitely going to show you what to look out for in terms of not taking a good photograph. And this one is a good example. So a beautiful morning line and, and morning light, which uh, sometimes can be quite tough. People often want morning light really good, really badly, which is great. But uh, if an animal is looking into the morning light with the sun rising, there will be a lot of shadow, a lot of um, shadow on his face and his eyes. This morning, there was a lot of m mist, so it diffused that light and his eyes were just perfectly lit up. And when he came to drink, he left this beautiful reflection on the water here, which is is what you want to look for. However, I took this photograph not so well because one, you put his body, I put his body right next to the, the frame, which you don't want to do. It just means there's less options uh, when it comes to post-processing and compositionally it doesn't look right when his body is that close to the frame. So give the animal a lot more room and also be aware of where he's looking and where he's moving. He should be looking into the frame or moving into the frame. So here he's kind of looking out of it. Preferably probably I would have probably composed this a little bit better having moved the image up a little bit including more of the background next to his, his hips here and a little bit to the left having more of the background to the left. Anyway, that's uh, my problem and my fault but we're gonna come, we're gonna see if we can fix this image anyway. There's a number of images here of the same scene. There's tongues out, you don't really want that. He has eyes are looking straight at us, strong reflection in the water, clean clean face, nice and sharp. That's probably the one we're going to edit. Um, firstly, we're going to crop. This is a difficult one to crop. There's a lot of ways to crop this. You can crop uh, like this, where the line and his reflection are in the right-hand side of the frame, and he's kind of looking into the frame. That's probably the way I would do it with this image. It cuts a lot of the line up, which I don't really like doing, but for the sake of learning, let's do it anyway. One thing you've got to remember with cropping, which is very important, is you'll see these four lines come up on the crop. Um, they are, are helping you compose the image. Those are the rule of thought thirds. You can see there's three channels horizontally like that and vertically like that. And those channels are split by these lines. And where those lines meet are called power points. Um, and if you can stick your subject, your most important part of the image on those PowerPoints that will help draw the viewer to that position. So that helps you uh, as a guideline when you're cropping an image to stick your subject on those PowerPoints, those, those areas where those lines dissect. It's not written in stone. It's not a rule of um, that you can't break. There's some images that break the rule of thirds and are absolutely stunning. So don't feel afraid to break them. But one thing I'm going to show you with this image, which is... Uh, with reflections is how to really bring the reflection out of it. Let's crop it like that. This bush is on the side, add a little bit of depth. So we're going to do it like that. Anyway, once you've come to the basic channel here and you've played with all your settings here, you might want to add a little bit more contrast, a little bit hazy with the mist. 
uh, a little bit more clarity with that, but just touch it. The problem with these sliders, they, they affect the entire photograph. So usually I won't even touch contrast and clarity um, in this uh, section. I would only use it in more localized areas by using these filters in the adjustment brush. But one thing I will do is bring the shadows up a little bit underneath his mane. He is quite dark. So bring that back a little bit, and now let's do what we came here for. Click on this function here. This is the adjustment brush, which means it's just your, your, your set, your edits, which you can see down here. You've got the same sliders as you would in the normal panel, but they're going to be localized. They're going to be where your brush is. You can see it gives you a little brush function like this. And now we're going to focus on his face. That's what we're going to do with this image. We're going to up the clarity like this. Nope, not the dehaze. Dehaze is a very useful slider, but we're not going to do that on this episode. So you're going to up the clarity quite a lot here. The clarity is going to make those black lines, the scars on his face show up a little bit more, clean it up, especially on, on fur. If he's quite far away, it makes it look uh, more clear, more sharper. So up the clarity a little bit, up the sharpness a little bit. Be careful of sharpness. Too much sharpness will make it look noisy. If you want to counter that, sharpness and noise sliders always work hand in hand. If you put a lot of sharpness in, you must put a little bit of denoise um, in there as well. Otherwise, uh, it will look noisy and likewise with a noise slider if you try and denoise so much you will lose sharpness completely so just play with them and, and come up with what's best you'll see i'm just going to up the sharpness quite a lot to the clarity sorry quite a lot here so you can see the difference it makes to his nose you can see how those scars on his nose now pop out quite a lot more makes it quite clean go over his mane it it, it brings out the blacks and brings out the whites a little bit more makes them complement each other a little bit more so Go over that uh, quite a lot. I'd be careful of the eyes. I'll do the eyes separately. Uh, reason being, if you often rub over the eyes with the clarity brush or contrast brush, um, so let's go back there, you can make the black eyelids on a cat really, really black and makes them look like they're wearing black eyeliner and makes it look very unnatural. So be careful of that. Come onto the eyes separately. So go back to the adjustment brush. And this is pretty much what I like to do with eyes is you up the clarity quite a lot and the denoise function. This will take the noise out of the eye, but don't denoise the fur. The denoising the fur can make it look quite soft. And you want these eyes to be sharp and glassy. So you do those, a little bit more clarity and a little bit of denoise inside the eye, and it will make it look sharp and glassy, which is what you want. Now onto the reflection. Same thing, adjustment brush. And you come down to one thing, which is clarity. And you can literally take that all the way up to 100 and rub that over his reflection and what it does to reflections is just amazing really makes it pop out a little bit more makes it much clearer if it's not clear enough on the first time which it, sh which it should be you can come up here to new and it'll do another brush but with your exact same settings and you can change them up as much as you like but this one we're going to keep them the same and you can brush over it again and make it a touch clearer so again don't do too much it'll look unnatural We'll leave that one as is. Um, you can see his face is now nice and sharp. Reflection is popping quite nicely. We're not going to do too much more to that image. Second image, uh, female leopard. We followed her all morning. Incredible sighting. Uh, problem is I left my white balance on the night before, which was shooting stars, which was very cold. You can see like this, the image is blue. Not a problem at all. Your white balance is not... Uh, permanently affect the, the, the photograph in camera. You can literally come to your temperature slider here in basic, bring that back to the middle and you've saved that image. There's a number of images we got of this morning and her coming up to rub her cheek glands here is what we're going to work on for the time being. Uh, there's a number of ways you can go with this one, which one you prefer. That one's quite a nice portrait shot. I would crop in a little bit like that. Bring it up like this. This is one somewhere you've got to be careful. Don't bring it all the way up to her feet here. Always be aware of where the feet would be, even though if she's standing in grass, don't crop out where the feet would be. Compositionally, that doesn't work very well. Anyway, I think I'm going to stick with this one, and I'm going to crop in quite a lot with this image. Because she's in shadow, she is not popping as much as we'd, we'd like her to, to be. So we're going to crop out these areas here. You can see there's a lot of sunlight in the background. It's quite distracting. We're going to try and get rid of a lot of that. So let's crop down, crop out some of that, and let's crop like this. A little bit more of that. Remember those dissecting lines? We're going to put that right on her eyeball like that. And she's kind of looking into the frame and at the wood. So we've got something to work with here. But because she's in the shadow, you can see there's a lot of noise inside this image. So this brings us to the details panel here. We come down here and you can see, like I said earlier, sharpening and noise always work hand in hand. If you do noise this image, which you need to do, don't do too much. I'm very seldom you go over 30. If you go over 30, it starts to get very soft. So... There's quite a lot of noise in this image because of her being in the shade. So let's go down, let's go to 25. 
as soon as you bring that up again, play with the sharpness and just see what you can get away with here before it starts to bring the noise back again. That's quite quite a right. Uh, it's a little bit too much noise. Again, with sharpening, uh, I'd seldomly go over 50. This one can is managing it just. Let's come down still. Yeah, I'd leave it about there. That's a lot of sharpening, and you're, usually I'd say don't use more than, uh, again, 30. Um, this one could do with a lot of sharpening, though, so we're going to keep it like that. And there we go. We've, we've, we've cleaned up the noise a bit. We've made it a bit sharper, so we can leave that details panel now again, and we're going to use something called the radio filter, this little circle up top here. We're going to use that to help bring her away from uh, the darkness that she's sitting in, the shadow that she's sitting in like this. You can come to basic here and increase the shadows quite a lot. It's not going to do a huge amount. See, it did a little bit there. It's still worth doing. Um, but also, uh, these radio filters are going to do a little bit of a better job. And all this is is just drawing a circle. And I will show you if I just down the exposure so you can see what we can do here. So you draw a circle like this, and you can change the shape of the circle. And if you hover over that, you can see your adjustments will only affect outside the circle. If you click it down on an invert mask here, your adjustments will only affect inside the circle. This feather is how far away from that line your circles will gradually, your adjustments will gradually filter away. So always good to have a bit of feather there. Uh, more the more the better. It means it's going to have a more natural effect when you uh, do these 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 adjustments. We're going to do two circles here of pretty much the same size. So we're going to get another one new and we're going to bring it down and we'll make it a similar shape like this. Put them right next to each other and we're going to click. No, we're not going to click on the invert mask. So this circle, you can see these two buttons here. That allows you to, to edit these two circles. What's inside the circle in terms of this circle. And if you hover over this one, you'll see it's outside the circle. So we're going to put Let's put this inside one. Let's drag it across, make it a little bit bigger. Let's include quite a lot here. Don't put it just over her face. It'll look very unnatural. Sorry, my still exposure's down there. So let's put it about there. Don't be afraid to leave the image with the edges of the circle. Again, it, it'll, it'll help it be a little bit more natural. So this is what's affecting outside of the circle. We're going to bring those right next to each other like that. You can see that's affecting that area, and if I move to this one, it's affecting that area. So we're going to go to this one, and we're just going to increase the exposure at touch, just like that. Bring back a little bit more light to her face. This one, which is affecting outside the circle area, we're going to take away a little bit of exposure. Sorry, I've left that clarity button button on. There we go. Take a little bit of the exposure away. Not too much. If you do too much, it looks, again, very unnatural. So... That's about all I'll do with that. Not too much more. We've denoised her face. We've denoised her eyes. We've brought some light onto her face and taken light away from around her, trying to bring the 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 viewer's attention to her. So there's not much more we're going to do with that. We're going to go to our last image, which is this one, male leopard. We had him all morning. Um, incredible. We had him to himself, which is which is uh, quite special to this place. We get to do it quite often, which was which uh, never gets tiring. One thing I want to point out here is you can see these little blue spots. So this comes to my histogram over here. If you, we're going to do a different video on a histogram uh, soon. But this is pretty much trying to explain the data inside your image, where all your blacks and whites are, and your blues, reds, greens, yellows. You can see these two boxes in the left and right. If you click on them, it highlights it. That just means if it's highlighted, if you have white areas that have no data, it's too bright, it's going to show red. So if I go to the basic thing here and I click exposure all the way, you can see all those red areas are so bright that there's no data there. If you were to save that image like that, you can't bring those areas back again. If I were to go to the left, those blue areas are black. You can't bring data back there. That's 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 too dark. If you save the image like that, that area will always be black. So it's nice to leave those two highlighted just so you know when you're editing dark areas. Um, and if you were to do minor adjustments, you can see like this. Where was those blacks? You can see them over there. You can see the black starting to show up on those spots. Not a train smash if you do have clipping. Um, clipping just means those areas that are the data is lost is too black or too white. Um, sometimes it still works, the image still works, but just keep an eye on them, so it's quite nice to do that. Okay, let's crop this image. Uh, well, let's have a look out of both of them, which one we want to keep the most. So there's two options here. One of them is a bit cleaner, it doesn't have the grass in the foreground. However, it does have a piece of grass over this male leopard's uh, face. Very easy to move in Photoshop, but that's for a different video. 
This one here is looking straight at us, which is a bit better, straight down the lens, um, but it has these pieces of grass in the foreground. So we're going to go with this one. I think it's a little bit better. That grass is a bit out of this leopard's face, which is very distracting the other one, and he's looking more into the lens, which kind of draws you in a little bit better. So let's crop the image down like this. Very easy crop. Remember your dissecting lines, your PowerPoints, if you want to call them that. Careful of the tail. Never crop the image that the animal is too close to its tail or its foot is too close to the frame. So we'll probably leave it like that. Sometimes you can't get the dissecting line onto his face. Um, without cutting off the tail. So don't stress too much if it's not exactly on it. We're going to leave that about there. Crop away things that are distracting. All that water, all that 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 distant grass behind him is all distracting. So we're going to come down to this. There's a little bit of cloud in the sky, so not really any harsh shadows, although we could, probably could bring his eyes out a little bit. Let's just denoise this image a little bit. Like I said, a cloudy day. Come down to denoise. A touch of this noise reduction uh, slider and luminance and a little bit of sharpening sometimes the adjustments are very subtle you've got to zoom out in to see them just to sharpen that up a little bit and let's close that detail function then we're going to come down to our adjustment brush again again it's it's very uh, tempting to just come to basic here and up the contrast and up the clarity and you're kind of defeating the object of what you're looking for you want your subject to to be brought away from your background to pop to 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 be more clear than your background um, so this image was shot on f5.6 so there's still quite a lot of detail in the background so we don't want to put more contrast or more clarity into his background we just want that into his into the subject into the leopard himself so we're going to come onto this adjustment brush up the clarity this is what i like to do with a cat's face and up the sharpness be very careful putting the the noise reduction slider here on a leopard's face if you do it on fur it can make it look quite soft so we'll we don't really need to denoise his face at this time so we just want to make it clearer so you come on the clear clarity brush and you can clarity you can brush all over his body here and it's increasing the, the clarity and the sharpness of his face and body and if you want to do eyes you come into the eyes and you do the eyes separately eyes I love this clarity brush on eyes take the sharpness away remember you want to make eyes look glassy look uh, reflective and very sharp. You want those little black veins and the black pupil to pop. This is where the clarity brush comes in handy. So you up the clarity a bit and now you can use the noise slider. So denoise a little bit. You can rip all that noise out of his eye and make it look very glassy. But try to keep your adjustments inside the eye like this. Very simple. You've now made that eye quite crisp and quite glassy without giving him black eyeliner. However, there is still quite a lot of darkness in those eyes. And if you want to make eyes lighter, this might not work this way because if there's a shadow over the predator's eye and there's a shadow inside his eye, a lot of people make the mistake of just going straight to the adjustment brush, increasing the exposure and brushing. I'll do it quite a lot so you can see what they do in their brush over the eye like this. And they bring the eyes back again like that. And obviously that's an extreme version. And they kind of bring the eyes back like that. What's a bit of a better version is if you come down to the same thing, adjustment brush, but instead of doing exposure, you do shadows. And instead of just brushing over the, the eyeball itself, you brush over the eyebrows, the eyelids everywhere. And a, the little algorithm that goes on will just increase the shadowed areas, which is usually his eyeball and the inside of the eyelid here. And will make it much more, more, much more natural. So you increase the shadows, you can go all the way here because there's not a lot of shadow there. And brush over the whole area like that. And the adjustment's very little. But you can see a little bit of light coming back, especially to these areas around the eyelids in here. And it makes it look like it's not wearing that black eyeliner that um, can ruin so many photographs. So there we go. We've done his face. We made him sharper. One more thing we can do to this image to help bring the viewer to the subject, which is his, which is his face, the center of, of, the, of the photograph. The most important part of the photograph is face and eyes. Is use this square up here. It's called a... a, a Go black, graduated filter, sorry. So unlike the radial filter, which is a circle and the adjustments are all around it or in it, this is a line and all the adjustments are going to be on either side of that line and it will gradually change. You can see now if I put this in here, three lines appear. So I dragged it from left to right. So your adjustments are going to be as, uh, strongest on the right and gradually fade away to the left. So if I were to turn exposure all the way down, you can see it's very un uh, highly unexposed there and gradually 
the adjustments fade away like that. So quite a useful thing in this sighting, in, in, in this image where um, you can take a bit of light away from the background behind him and to his left and bring the viewer to the leopard's face. However, those are very extreme adjustments. So we're going to take a lot of that away. And don't be afraid to drag this left hand line right over the, the leopard's face like this. Take a little bit of, you can see, if I had to go like that, the adjustments are affecting pretty much up to his shoulder. So come down and just do a little bit here, otherwise it looks very unnatural. And you can see now, even with that small adjustment, there's clipping inside these areas. Again, don't freak out. Sometimes it doesn't even matter, but I'll show you how to get rid of that now. We can put another graduated filter in, same thing, take a little bit of the exposure down, coming from the left, maybe, maybe a little bit of an angle like this. Make it look nice and natural, take a little bit more off. And you see, just taking away a little bit of the exposure there, looks like he's kind of coming into a little bit more light. The focus is more on his head, and you can see all these areas that are clipping. No problem if it clips after you put that in. Come down to your basics panel, increase the shadows until those blue areas have gone, and voila, you've fixed those clipped areas. They've all gone. Fantastic. That's about all I'll do with this image. Um, I'll leave it at that and not do too much more, otherwise it starts to look unnatural. Be careful of over-editing. Anyway, that's it for this week. We're going to have another safari coming up in a day. Tomorrow we've got a two-day safari. So lots more to show you, lots more material coming your way. Stand by, enjoy, and see you then. Take care.